Okay. All right, uh, so a very good afternoon to everyone here in um, coming here for this online workshop. My name is Shane, and together with my colleague Eliza, we'll be hosting this uh, afternoon session. Right, so just to clarify, right, that this session is actually a uh, repeat of the previous one on 30th April. Yeah, so if, if you have actually attended that session, um, this is a similar session to that. This is not actually a part two, but welcome back. And we hope that uh, you get to pick up on some, something that you didn't manage to uh, previously also. Yeah, so we, we are from uh, Push SG. And the reason why we are having this workshop is because we thought that it could be useful to actually uh, curate content, you know, for people who are unfamiliar with uh, video conferencing platforms and want to get started. And um, the... The genesis of this is that we first started with a uh, resource guide that we put together and thereafter we realized that it could actually be beneficial to couple that uh, resource guide right together with this workshop whereby we can then further elaborate on uh, what are the various uh, existing uh, video conferencing platforms that you guys could actually leverage on. Yeah, we also like to say at this point right that we are not uh, experts uh, in this field but uh, we have had some experience uh, conducting online workshops, meetings, uh, focus group discussions during this period of time. And we thought that we could actually share some of these uh, experiences with uh, everyone here. And uh, as with many of us here today, I believe that there was actually a uh, steep learning curve uh, to bring our work online during this uh, COVID situation. Yeah, so we really hope that uh, some of the things that uh, work for us will also work for you all today. Yep. So let me just admit some of the people who have uh, come in. Yeah. Okay, so moving forward, right, uh, just some um, sort of uh, ground rules to actually enable us to have a, a more conducive uh, virtual workshop. Yeah, so uh, we hope that we can actually have a uh, one conversation at a time and we can mute our mic uh, when we are not talking and also uh, speak clearly and slowly. Yeah, so for your uh, experiential learning also that uh, there's actually a, a mute all function, right? For host. So if you were to be using a uh, Zoom platform in the future, you can actually mute your participants uh, if you find that uh, it could be a bit uh, noisy with the white noise that's been created uh, with uh, some people talking, right? And also uh, switch on your video so that uh, we can all see uh, every one of you, right? And also be present, right? So the workshop, like I was saying, is going to be experiential uh, in that we are using Zoom so that you get to see and also uh, experience uh, some of the functions that we'll be sharing. So some of the learning outcomes that uh, you have uh, probably already uh, seen uh, if you have uh, come in early to this uh, room, right? Uh, we hope that at the end of the day, when you leave this uh, room, you'll be aware of the various uh, video conferencing platforms and features for e-coaching. So for the uh, purpose of this session, right, we're actually introducing five uh, platforms, right? And then uh, we hope that you get to familiarize yourself with uh, Coach SG's uh, quick starter guide that I uh, was mentioning earlier. You know, to get you started on using uh, video conferencing uh, platforms. And you also, you walk away with, with some practical tips to utilize the video platforms to aid your coaching. And at the end of the day, we have also designed the session in a manner, right, that uh, you get to ideate, you have a discussion, you know, with fellow coaches on using video platforms for e-coaching. Okay, so that's why uh, we hope that you'll be able to uh, walk away with. Okay. Right, so uh, just to get a sense, right, of uh, where we are in this room, maybe we can uh, do a small check-in at this point, right? Uh, if you can actually take out your phone, you can uh, use your camera if you're using an iPhone or QR scanner to scan this uh, QR code on your screen uh, to answer these two questions, right? On a scale of uh, one to five, how confident are you in using video conferencing platforms for your coaching? And also, uh, what video conferencing platforms have you tried or heard of? Right, so you can either scan the QR code at this point, or you can actually just go to menti.com and type in 239222, right? So just to get a sense of uh, where we are at uh, in this uh, workshop. Okay, I'll be sharing the, the screen of the uh, Mentimeter website in a while's time so that you all can um, have a visual of uh, the survey that you have just answered, right? But in the meantime, I hope all of you have already uh, scanned the code. And if not, uh, you can type in menti.com 239222.
Okay, give me a moment while I toggle to that uh, screen. Okay. Yep. So as you can see, right, the uh, answer to the first question from a scale of one to five, uh, the confidence level is at around three point one, right? So it's pretty uh, average. Okay. So the next uh, question that uh, we have uh, you answered. Okay. So the bigger the uh, the word is, right? Uh, that means the more people have actually uh, typed in that particular word, right? So Zoom seems to be the most popular one, uh, followed by WebEx and also uh, Skype, MoverMeet, right? Some of you have uh, utilized uh, YouTube, okay? Some Facebook Live, um, okay, IG Live even, right? Um, some say none, okay, Hangout, right? So just to clarify also that uh, Hangout is a different application from uh, Google Meet, okay? So if you are, if you're actually uh, utilizing Hangouts, uh, it's a different app. Okay, uh, MS Team. Mm, okay, right, so Zoom, Facebook. Okay, so this is uh, just to give you a uh, sense of uh, what we have over here. There's actually one more app um, diagonally, it's called uh, Flipgrid, okay, there's uh, this particular application that someone has uh, put in and also Google made, right? So these are perhaps uh, not so commonly heard of, but uh, if you have been utilizing this, uh, feel free to actually share with us later on. Uh, I think uh, we'll be very interested to also hear your experience with uh, these applications. Okay, cool. Right, so moving on, let me just share back my screen. Okay, yeah. So at this point in time, uh, we'd like to actually share this uh, quick starter guide that uh, we have uh, put together to get you uh, started, right? And uh, the way that this guide is actually organized, uh, it is organized into uh, categories of uh, price plans and features. Uh, we have also curated the uh, quick starter videos that we have uh, found online and also security considerations that you have to take note of, right? Uh, as uh, I imagine all of you have, uh, most of you have also uh, read on the uh, news on how some of the schools, uh, they, when the students were having their online uh, home-based learning, right, they were actually hacked, right? So uh, there are some security considerations that you could also implement, you know, in your uh, online coaching that could actually uh, minimize or prevent such uh, things from happening, right? So um, just to uh, bring you guys to this uh, space, okay, if you were to see this QR code over here, you can actually scan it. Okay, and uh, download the uh, toolkit or the quick starter guide that we have actually created if you uh, have not done so. So that will actually help you to also um, have a sense of what the toolkit looks like. So you all can take the next few moments to uh, scan your QR code. Okay, so you'll be probably directed to redirected to this uh, page whereby uh, the first uh, link that you see would then be the quick starter guide that you can download, okay? Okay, I will just uh, be sharing my screen of the toolkit also in case uh, you are un unable to download. Okay, so uh, let me go to that toolkit. Okay, are you guys able to see my screen? Okay. okay, so this is actually the uh, quick starter guide that we have uh, put together for your convenience I, and I and we really hope that it's going to be uh, useful for you. Right, the way that we have actually uh, organized this uh, also, we have put a uh, content page uh, together whereby it can give you a auto scroll uh, function. So if you were to click on Zoom, you go straight to Zoom, right? And the way that each uh, application uh, or information has been organized, as I mentioned just now, you can actually see the uh, features and also the price plans over here. So if you want to 
uh, look at this in more detail, you can then click here, you know, for the Zoom uh, price plans. Okay, and these are the places that you can also download Zoom by mobile and also by computer. Or, you know, for some of the apps that are available out there, you can actually launch from your browser. So there may not be a need to actually download the application. But for Zoom, uh, you still need to download the app, right? And we have also um, served out, okay, uh, quick Zoom starter videos. Okay, so these are the videos that we thought are actually uh, useful uh, for anyone, you know, uh, because they, they actually have sufficient information and they are not too long, you know, for you to get started, right? So it's only around three to four minutes and you can actually uh, just watch them and get started. Right, and uh, at the same time, we have also included more resources and information, you know, from the uh, product uh, website. Okay, and you can also watch the live tutorials that's available here. Right, and at the same time, we have also included uh, security considerations that you would want to also uh, take note of when you are using uh, each application. So like, for instance, Zoom, uh, you can uh, look at uh, what are the functions that you may need to uh, enable or disable, right? And then, um, there are also some visuals for you to actually have a better sense of uh, what to do, right? So this is uh, in accordance to also some of the guidelines that have been uh, introduced uh, to our MOE schools, right? And uh, at the same time, we have also researched the web on uh, what other security considerations would be useful for any user of uh, Zoom. Okay, so this is just to give you a sense of uh, the information here. Okay, so we have also put together WebEx as one of the uh, products that you can also consider, right? And in fact, many of these uh, products, right, uh, they are actually um, the, the free uh, so-called product, right? The, the free version, right, actually have sufficient features for you to get started. So similarly over here, you can download uh, based on all this information that is uh, provided here, right? Uh, and also certain uh, security considerations that you may want to uh, take note of. That's for WebEx, okay? So if you want to actually return back to the contents page, you can click here and then you'll be back here. Okay, so a few other uh, applications that we are introducing include uh, Live Size, uh, Skype, and also uh, Google uh, Hangouts Meet, right? And also uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, put together a, a general security uh, measures. Uh, so information for this uh, particular um, aspect, right? Uh, all curated here. So these are essentially uh, cross-cutting information that you want to consider when you're conducting any uh, e-coaching session. Okay, and also at the same time, at the end of this uh, toolkit, uh, we also have other resources, right? Like Active SG Circle, which you could uh, sign up to conduct virtual coaching sessions to a wider community, right? So this is actually a relatively new platform that uh, has just been introduced by Sport SG. So uh, please do go there and uh, see, you know, uh, for yourself, uh, what are the available opportunities for you as a coach? And um, recently, we have also put together a uh, Coach SG YouTube channel. So you can also check out the latest uh, home-based learning videos and other resources that you can also adapt for your online coaching. Yeah, and um, as usual, right, just uh, to sell for you a bit, right? So also follow us on our Facebook page and also Instagram uh, updates. Okay, so uh, that's uh, it for this uh, particular toolkit. Okay. Hope that gives you a sense of, uh, you know, the, the available uh, products that uh, are out there. Okay, so. Hmm. Okay, so this is actually a summary of what I've just said, uh, but uh, done in a manner whereby you get to actually have a overview of the available features, right? that uh, would be uh, accessible for you, you know, if you, you know, were to actually uh, start coaching online. So for most of the, um, in fact, for all of the uh, applications here, uh, they allow for uh, screen sharing, okay? And then you also have the uh, chat room function, right? So in terms of the chat function, uh, intuitively, you can actually use them to uh, have concurrent conversations. If you are uh, short of time, you know, you can actually, uh, you know, have uh, some of your athletes, your players to uh, type into the chat. Right, or you can also use that as a platform to uh, collate or collect uh, questions, right? And then you can also uh, look at them to answer them later, right? So maximum number of participants, right? Uh, for the free subscription. So for Zoom, it's actually uh, 100. Uh, live size is uh, 25. Uh, Cisco WebEx is 100 also. Skype 50. And just some good news uh, for everyone at this point. I'm not sure if you have seen the news uh, recently, right? So Google actually mentioned that they are gradually making Google Meet free. Yeah, so in the past, uh, they everyone has to actually sign up for a uh, G Suite or Google Suite uh, account, 
right? And for that uh, account, minimally, you already have to pay a certain subscription fee, right? But uh, what is happening here is that uh, Google Meet will be made free, independent of a G Suite account. So you don't have to have a G Suite account um, to schedule a meeting. So in the past, you can actually use the application, but you can only join, but you can't schedule. So now you can also schedule uh, your meetings, uh, your sessions, right? Because it's been made free. Okay, so minimum uh, is actually 100 uh, participants that you can have on Google Meet. And uh, from what I know, I, I believe that uh, there'll be more updates coming out in the news also that uh, for Google Meet uh, till s September, I believe that the, the timing or the duration that you can actually utilize the application uh, is still unlimited, but there could be plans to actually uh, limit the duration that you are meeting online to 16 minutes from September onwards. Right, so Google Meet is actually one of the application that if you uh, think suits your needs, you can also uh, consider. Okay, so time limit wise, I was mentioning for Google Meet, uh, there's actually a time limit for Zoom. Okay, uh, 40 minutes time limit, unless you are representing a school. So uh, if uh, that's the case, uh, you, uh, you are so-called uh, free from that uh, limitation. Okay, and um, the hack so called the uh, workaround uh, for this actually is to just leave the meeting and come back in. Yeah, but it could uh, be a little bit disruptive uh, if you were having or to be having a session and then having your athletes or players, you know, leave the meeting and then come back in. So uh, that's something for you to uh, consider if that's uh, the best uh, application for your needs. Okay, or if you want to just keep your, your sessions under 40 minutes, that could work very well for you actually. Okay, so for the number of schedules, uh, it's actually unlimited for the applications that I've just mentioned. Six months free for life size. And uh, for the breakout uh, room, okay, it is available for paid uh, subscriptions, right? So for uh, Zoom, for instance, you get to actually experience it in a moment's time when my colleague Eliza will be uh, allocating everyone into a different uh, breakout room. So that will be something for you to uh, see for yourself how, how that actually works. Yeah, but the caveat for this is that it is uh, available mostly for paid uh, subscriptions, okay? There's also a uh, whiteboard function for these uh, applications. So later I'll be showing you uh, in, a, in a moment's time how that also can be utilized uh, for Zoom, okay? Except for Skype, okay? And uh, for now, Google Meet, okay? So gallery views actually uh, varies between desktop and also mobile applications. Okay, so like, I have uh, realized that uh, in terms of um, having a better experience on, on these uh, platforms, uh, it is actually better to use our laptop, our computer, you know, to, to access uh, uh, this uh, video conferencing tools because you get to actually see more people in a grid format. So as you can see uh, just now when we were actually logging back to uh, that gallery, you could actually see up to perhaps uh, 25 uh, of our faces there. So if your computer actually allows for it, um, for Zoom actually you can see up to 49 people, right? But that is if your system actually allows for that, okay? Uh, if you are actually using mobile applications, um, there could be a limitation. So like for instance, for Zoom, I realized that I can only see uh, four people on my mobile app. Okay, um, not to worry also in the event, let's say uh, you are downloading Google Meet and uh, Google Meet at this point in time doesn't really have a gallery view uh, the way that Zoom has. There are actually extensions that or plugins that you can download from the web, right? So there, there's actually this um, Google Meet uh, plugin or, or extension called a grid extension, if I'm not wrong. You can actually download that. That allows you to see up to 16 people on your screen, okay, if you're actually using desktop. Okay, so this is just uh, some information for your consumption, right? Okay, so just to uh, have a view on Zoom, like I was mentioning just now, uh, 40 minutes time limit. So there's actually this uh, whiteboard function also. Let me just uh, show you guys if you have not seen it before. Okay, so this is the uh, whiteboard function that uh, is available for you. So uh, you could actually share this screen, you know, with your participants or your players, athletes. If you want to make a point, if you want to actually uh, talk about a certain strategy, if you want to debrief them, right? So you could draw, you can do that on it, right? Okay, you can also uh, type on it, right, by clicking text, right? So this is something that you can actually uh, utilize you now while you're actually engaging your, your players or athletes. Right, so this is just something for you to uh, consider, okay? Okay, um, 
And also, yeah. right, uh, there is actually this function whereby you can change your virtual background. As you can look uh, around the uh, gallery view some just now, some of us actually have our background a little bit different, right? So um, the background can be anything from uh, images to even, even videos, okay? So you can actually utilize that. Uh, and the function of that uh, for what I have actually done for myself or for the workshop that I've conducted, uh, sometimes I've actually utilized that, you know, to uh, use that uh, function as a uh, check-in. So, you know, getting your players or athletes to actually come in with a particular background and then asking them to maybe uh, come with a background that uh, sh showcase their, their mood or their emotions, you know, for this week, right? So, they can maybe come with a, a movie background that depict a, a zombie apocalypse. So, maybe that would actually uh, tell, you know, of how, how their week has been or they can come with a background to, to actually showcase a, a beach, right, so to, to actually uh, indicate to suggest that it's been a pretty relaxing week. Yeah, so just something for you to actually play around and um, consider. Okay, screen sharing also like uh, you have been experiencing actually all this time, right? Uh, so you can you can share different uh, screens on your device, right? But just another caveat is that uh, for desktop, you can share PowerPoint slides. You can even share uh, videos with sound from the from the web like YouTube, right? But uh, when it comes to iPad or even uh, mobile devices, right, there are limitations, okay? Uh, you are not able to actually share uh, PowerPoint uh, slides, but you can still share PDF. So that's a workaround for you to consider. Okay, gallery view, uh, I already mentioned, um, it's better for you to actually, uh, you know, um, use desktop if you want to see more of uh, your players or faces. Okay, and there are also extensions and plugins, right? So there are, um, there is this particular, uh, uh, plugin, you can actually schedule Zoom from a uh, Google Calendar, right? So you can actually also download this uh, particular extension if you want to have some convenience uh, in doing your schedules for, for your video conferencing tools, uh, your, your, your sessions, right? Yeah, so uh, that's all for my side. I hope you guys actually found this uh, good enough for you to uh, get started. Right, so now, now I actually hand this time over to uh, Eliza, uh, who will be bringing you uh, over in the next uh, segment. Eliza, over to you. Okay. Yeah, so um, as you can see, Shane was actually telling you about the functions of the various video platforms. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a video of how it has actually been applied in our national water polo men's team. So this um, video is actually done by one of our strength and conditioning coaches at Singapore Sport Institute. So um, yeah, it's a really good video. So to give you an idea on what um, e-coaching can be like. Uh, Shane, can you transfer the host rights yep. to me? Yeah, so that's another function that you guys can actually do. You can uh, allocate uh, hosts to each other. Okay, so now Eliza is the host for this session. So only hosts usually can share their screens. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the program. The plan basically is I have an AM session and a PM session. I only have a few simple tabs, the warm-up, some warm-up exercises that you can work with. Monday we have strength session, Tuesday we have a circuit bodyweight session to work on endurance. And then Wednesday we have active recovery session. So active recovery session, I don't ask for a lot. So probably just one, two sets of work just to keep the body moving. Thursday, we have to strength again and then back to the circuit session. I have a link for every exercise. Click on the link, it will show you the exercise. What I ask is that you, you read through the instructions, you follow the, the exercise as closely as you can based on other instructions here as well. For body weight exercises to work, it will still work, you need to follow instructions so that you can get the adaptations out of what I'm trying to achieve here. So tomorrow will be about coping and dealing with this COVID-19 situation, finding new opportunities to grow in these times, 
the plans for sports psych sessions that I'll share and also the topics that the team will be keen to know and learn. Perhaps the team can think about uh, more holistic. So anything related to maybe videos that you want to learn more, um, sports psych sessions, um, motivation, anxiety, whatnot, SNC sessions that you like to clarify, nutrition topics that you like to learn about, or anything related to the body as well. If there are any specific topics that you like to learn, uh, feel free to let us know. Right, so that we can uh, have a continual learning uh, and increase our knowledge in, in these in this times as well. Right, so that's the main goal. we mostly done okay then now uh, Derek will demonstrate the first superset so for if you want to see the shared screen right we got put in the repetitions as well as the number of sets that we are doing today so obviously um, we are going from left to right so first set is 8 reps then after that 9 reps then 9 reps then last one is 10 reps yeah so for the first superset we will need the chair or stool or bench or whatever you have to support yourself as well as for the uh, decline push-ups. For the first super set, Derek will demonstrate. Um, whereas for the other two super sets, it's a repeat of what we've done before. So uh, unless someone can't remember the exercise, then we will just go ahead. Okay? But for now, Derek will demonstrate the first super set. For the squat itself, <coughs> I need you to go low enough such that the back doesn't hunch. Try and keep your chest up. If you can't get down this low, just get down to maybe a quarter squat depth, I think it's fine. Just now I was telling you, don't drop too quickly. So you can see a lot of the big hunch here, even though it's on uh, the back view. So try and keep the chest up. Try and reach your hips backward. Imagine you have a, a, a high stool behind that you want to take a seat. So you want to reach your butt rearwards first before you actually go down. So the good thing is that he has his uh, foot intact. So make sure that heel is, is planted to the ground itself. This is for your feedback. After every single session, whether is it your AM mobility core session, after your afternoon strength or circuit session, I want you to fill this up. The AM sessions, I didn't change much because uh, like I said, it's supposed to be like a lighter session maybe in the day. Yep. So most of the changes are done here, but we focus a lot on the tempo. So let's, start with let's hope they can, they can do it with proper form because like I said, this period is to really focus on the form as well. Sure, sure. Now the circuit session, I have a few focus. So maybe on Tuesday, the focus is more maybe on strength. Even Saturday, I put it as a circuit. Yeah, so so I think it's was, quite challenging, it will be, I think, yeah. Yeah, so it's because it's endurance focus, it's end yeah. of the week. Friday session, I change it more to power focus. That's the concept of, of after week one of observation. So Perfect. this week yeah. again, I will observe and then we'll make the necessary changes. Sure, yeah, yeah, let's, let's see this and maybe next week, how's this going and then we can yeah device it, you know, whatever. Yep. Again. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video and found it um, insightful on what e-coaching can be like. Okay, so I'll share my screen again. Okay, 
So if we were to um, go through what the, the um, video was about, if you realize the coaching process is actually the same as what you would do in a normal coaching session. So you start with a pre-training briefing with your athletes and um, what Kevin, the strength and conditioning coach, did was he shared the screen with all the preparations that he had done during his training session. So during the session, this, uh, what he did is he allowed the athletes to take turns to lead. And so this um, actually frees himself up in order to, um, this, yeah, to free himself up so that he doesn't need to always be the one giving the instructions and everything so that he can also use the time to observe the rest of the athletes during the session. And when you saw the mode in gallery view, all the cameras were turned on so that the athletes can be observed by the coaches. So this is what you need to do in order to have an effective coaching session. And you also want to make sure that your athletes are positioning their laptop or their phone cameras in a view that you can see their stance and the form correctly. Okay, so now after the training session, they didn't, they didn't just stop there. He actually took the effort to have a feedback and monitoring form. He got all the national athletes to fill in um, what they, how they feel the coaching session when, um, maybe, and he even went through a form analysis that is provided by doing screenshots. So this is an advantage that you can use um, for technology that you can actually take screenshots and then you have the time to do that form analysis. So really take advantage of the features that technology can provide you to make the best out of your e-coaching session. So again, there was post-session reporting and if you are working with um, other coaches or even maybe in future your CCA teachers, have this discussion on how you can make the session better for your subsequent um, training sessions and also engagement of your athletes, okay? So um, now, uh, we want you to be discussing and sharing in your groups these three questions. So the first question, what sort of coaching activities can you use video conferencing platforms for, okay? And um, what are the practical tips that you want to share on using video conferencing platforms? So just now from the Mentimeter uh, feedback, we saw that some of you actually have confidence level of on four out of five or even five out of five. So really take this time and opportunity to maybe share with your groups on what are some of the tips that you can, um, that, that has helped you with e-coaching. And of course, the final question, for those of you that might not have tried e-coaching, maybe let's just share what are some barriers for you on e-coaching and how are you planning to overcome them? So um, in your groups, appoint a scribe uh, to actually uh, scribe down your discussions in the group chat, uh, a presenter as well as a timekeeper. So um, we will keep the discussions short and sweet so that we have time to share back to the bigger group and also to wrap up the discussion. So we, I will have actually my coach SG colleagues um, that will be also helping to co-facilitate the session. So I have some ground rules to remind you. I know that um, while Shane and I are hosting the session, some of you have switched off your videos, that's fine. But now that we're going to be breaking you up into much smaller groups, I will invite everyone to switch on your videos so that we know that everybody is participating in the discussion. Um, have a quick check-in. Maybe uh, the check-in question is here. What online platforms have you used before? And if you haven't, what, um, what platforms would you actually like to try? Okay, so... Um, Okay, so mute your mic when you are not talking and so and then you make sure you keep time. Okay, is uh, everybody fine with that? Okay, so what I will do now is I will break all of you up into the breakout rooms. Okay, and all you need to do is just click on the button to say join breakout room and then you will be led to your breakout rooms automatically. <laughs> So just click on your breakout rooms.
to the coaches that are still here, do click on the button that click yeah. that has join so that you can join your individual breakout rooms. Can you all see the button? Can you all find the button? Um, coaches that are still here do actually accept the invitation to join the breakout rooms. Okay. And for those of you that are watching live on Facebook, feel free to actually um have this discussion in the comments. So answer the three questions. If you have any tips, any barriers, and you know what sort of coaching activities can you all actually do? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so do click, um, those of you that are still here, remember to click the function below your screen and accept join breakout rooms, okay?
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good discussion. Okay, I see more and more people coming back. Right. Okay. Okay, so I hope that uh, you guys had a good discussion. Um, because of time, we do not have uh, time for every single group to be presenting. So um, can I actually get the help of our co-facilitators to um, actually volunteer your group if you feel that your group had some really good pointers on any of the questions. So it can be from question one, question two, or question three. So maybe I will um, actually kickstart the discussion, okay? So what sort of coaching activities can you use video conferencing platforms for? Okay, um, co for sales, is there anybody that uh, would like to volunteer your group? Maybe, doing? Yeah. Maybe my yeah. group can uh, go, can okay. volunteer. Uh, Ramesh Pao, can you can you uh, share with the others what we have discussed? Okay, uh, thank uh, you. Yeah. So basically, uh, what we discussed was that majority of them were using Zoom and uh, Microsoft uh, Teams. Okay. So uh, most of them use it for uh, video analysis. Uh, mm -hmm. They are they are, they are training proper, which uh, they will uh, which the kids now need to do a uh, bit in uh, whether is it swimming or. Or uh, we have uh, we want we have one from uh, badminton and then uh, one from football, so uh, okay. uh, and uh, also uh, majority also use it for meetings, meetings, meetings? yeah yeah their players or their okay yeah so All in right. terms of uh, the practical tips uh, to share using video conferencing, uh, mm. we discussed about uh, uh, sometimes there is a voice interruption uh, where I think there's echo. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you brought up the point about muting uh, everyone and then uh, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to speak and then they unmute themselves. Yes. Uh, that's one very really crucial. And yeah. then uh, in terms of uh, about adjusting the camera to ensure that we get a full uh, view of what we want to see uh, so that yeah. nothing uh, meets, miss out because now we are not in a full view physically with them. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's another one. Yes. And then uh, I think... Uh, Oh, there was a, a, a point brought up. I think this, this thing about the virtual background, which I think Shane brought up was a good one, which, uh, which mm -hmm. struck my mind where, you know, we can use it for other, other purposes rather than uh, having it for just our background. So something in relation to the exercise or the, the, the program that we're going to do or something that we're going to do for the day. Okay. I think it's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. All right. Okay, any other groups would like to go? Maybe any groups would like to talk about uh, more about question two as well to add on? Maybe co-facilitators, can you help to volunteer your group? Hi, Eliza. Hi. So, yeah, so uh, I think, Jenny, do you want to uh, talk a bit more about it and I can help you or are you okay? Okay, I'm not sure whether Jenny is around. Okay, uh, but uh, so it was quite interesting because our group had uh, people mm. from different types of sports. Okay. One was um, one was badminton. So ba uh, the badminton, uh, they were talking about trying to look at movements, mm -hmm. right? Um, and how he actually discusses it with his co-coach. Um, and I think that also brings to light uh, when we are uh, instructing movements, we need to make sure that the terms that we use in terms of correcting them, uh, you know, posturally, etc., are the correct terms, right? Um, so I think uh, because uh, we as coaches are not there to correct their posture, um, we need to be very clear with the terminology and the language that we use. So that was raised. And then uh, I think Jenny is from shooting. So she was saying that some of her strength and conditioning uh, exercises were a bit uh, restricted because they don't have equipment. Okay. But we did come up with the fact that we can actually use some uh, you know, equipment that we have in, uh, at the home that is safe mm -hmm. and that is of an appropriate weight maybe for core work. Yep. Right. So there are certain improvisations that we can actually uh, use when we are at home. And uh, they also talked about 
um, a lot of mindset and psycho, uh, you know, uh, psychological training in terms of uh, concentration, etc. So we raised the issue of how we can actually look for very suitable videos that can be used as a homework before the actual Zoom session, right? Mm -hmm. So you will get the uh, students to watch it uh, and, you know, they, they think about the content and during your actual Zoom session, you discuss uh, the content with your, your athletes, right? And, and linking it back to the video. And the last one that we talked about was this peer learning where we can split our athletes up into pairs and okay. some can demo while the other one can, the, the other athlete can actually give feedback so that we ensure that a lot of our skills are internalized and it's not passive learning. Um, and everyone has a try at doing something during the session itself. So it's like live demo and peer feedback. That's great. Yeah, I think that's a really good tip. Okay, thanks, Sham. Um, okay, can I just invite one last group to share on the last question about any barriers that you have for um, e-coaching? Uh, that one my group can share. I think okay. uh, I have a coach called Daoji. I think he's uh, interesting. Um, he has a preschool session for Active Energy okay. coming up tomorrow. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, maybe he can share some of the barriers as well as some of the things he has uh, actually thought about to, okay. to help overcome those barriers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah Daljit, you want to share? I, yeah. Could you share the group, please? Just unmute your mic. Yep, sure. Uh, well, the session is tomorrow and some of the you challenges... you want to turn on your video as well? Then we can see you. All right, sure. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Some of the challenges that I potentially could face would be mm. boredom from the kids because they're really young kids. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, form correction. Um because I, I, I have 28 signups and um, chances are they'll probably be on the couch more than moving around. Mm -hmm. um, some of the physical challenges will be the lighting, the sound projection. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably be a little bit more better if I had another moderator along with me who would assist in the tasks mm -hmm. as, as well. Yeah. Um, another challenge that I foresee would be yeah. how to motivate the little ones to go about doing some of the tasks. Um, also, lastly, form correction for all the 28 participants will be pretty hard to manage, I suppose. Mm, okay. So, uh, what are some of the maybe other things that you have done to overcome them? Um, actually, tomorrow will be my first session. So, okay. yeah. So, um, so, so the challenge is Okay, cool. Uh, all the best for your session tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I, I guess it's really great that you are just, you know, I think what we told the coaches during the uh, previous session is just go and try it out. Um, like, and, you know, as the more you do it, the more you'll get better at it. And that's how we all learn. So the first thing that we need to do is to try it out. And I mean, it's great that you have started doing that. Okay. Thank so uh, thank you everybody. Um, I'm sure that the rest of you had quite fruitful discussions in your group. Um, like, like I said, because of time, we can't get everybody to share, but I hope you managed to glean from one another's uh, experiences and, and uh, sharings as well. Okay, so I'll move on to the last part, which is about safety and security um, guidelines. Okay, so... Um, I think this is really something that uh, Shane mentioned earlier and we have outlined all the details in your in the toolkit. But I think the four areas that we really wanted to bring to your attention uh, for you to start off in the first place is do restrict your meeting schedule. So if your session, unless your session is really meant for anybody and everybody to attend, then okay, feel free to put it on a public platform. But then if it is only meant for your team or your particular um, 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 group, then do restrict it maybe in your WhatsApp group chat or close Facebook groups and password protect the meeting. So um, like for Zoom and WebEx, there's actually uh, passwords for before you can enter a meeting. Just like how you had to type in a password to enter the meeting today, um, that is a function that you also can set. So um, we have outlined some of these in the toolkit. So do take a look. 
Um, the second thing, again, is about having ground rules. So remember at the start of the session, Shane brought up some ground rules. And before your breakout sessions, um, I also reminded you on certain ground rules. So that is to establish rules for participants so that you actually have a smooth session and you don't need to spend too many time telling people to hey, speak one at a time on your camera and this kind of thing. Maybe for the first few sessions, you might have to remind your athletes or your players, but once they get a hang of it, this should come quite automatically. Okay, so even maybe if you're coaching um, youths or you want them to remind them about some basic classroom etiquette like, hey, um, no use proper language, no foul language, stuff like that. Okay, and third point is to adjust your security settings. So um, I think you really want to uh, take note of the security settings that you put in place for the various apps. Make sure you have the latest version because what the app provider usually does is they will have always um, enhanced security updates from time to time. So if you see a prompt to update your app, do uh, update it so that you have the latest security features and updates that, uh, that the provider actually gives you. And finally, Okay, um, for handling and reporting intruders, okay, um, if really worse come to worse, there is an intruder that disrupts your CCA session or your uh, coaching session, do um, report them to maybe the relevant um, personnel in charge, okay, if you are work, if you are in future, if you are handling um, an ECCA session, do um, let your teacher in charge know about it and schools have the relevant protocols that they can put in place in order to report this incident and of course I think really to prevent all of this is to make sure you have the relevant security settings in place okay so again all the details are on page 18 of the starter toolkit and I think at the end of the day I think really our invitation to you for those of you coaching in schools is to work closely uh, with your CCA teachers to see what are the platforms okay, that you can use because for the schools, they have certain selected preferred platforms because those are um, platforms that have better security features as well. So do work closely um, with your CCA teachers in charge. Okay, um, so that's the end of what we have to present. And uh, so we actually have some time for Q&A. There were some questions that actually came up from our Facebook live chat earlier. Okay, so there is things, uh, one of the questions was, what are some of the ways we could interact with participants? So just now Shane used Mentimeter, would you have other tools which you can share? Okay, so uh, we actually, like uh, I shared earlier, Mentimeter is actually one of our favorite because it actually has a lot of features and a lot of interactive platforms that you can organize your work. Uh, Shane also suggested there's this game platform. I mean, I think a few of you or most of you might have heard of it. It's called Kahoot. So it's really fun. You can put quizzes in it and you can just let um, your athletes just play along with it and it can be accessible for internet. So go check out Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T. Okay, and then there's also things like Padlet. Um, where you can organize your reflection quite nicely. There's also social um, interaction platforms like Slack, for example, that you can get your teams out of normal e-coaching sessions. You can also use that platform out of WhatsApp to maybe do reflection activities with your teams, share certain articles that you want them to look at, setting up a Facebook group. That is also possible. Okay? Um, any other things? Uh, Shane, would you like to add anything? Or if anybody has any final questions, you can unmute your mic and you can ask it live here as well. Yeah, I think uh, like what Eliza has shared, uh, Kahoot is uh, naturally one of the more fun platforms and uh, easily accessible ones that you can uh, utilize uh, for your for your so-called teams, right? And, and you can actually maybe uh, use that for your team bonding or like a check-in activity. Um, the other platform that uh, you could also do outside of a normal typical training session is this thing called uh, Scribble. So Scribble is, is like a win, lose or draw sort of uh, game activity that you can access online, whereby you get them to actually uh, just 
come in and uh, play and then uh, guess each other's drawing. So, so these are like some of the icebreaker things that uh, you may want to consider uh, to, to do something outside of the norm uh, of your training uh, sessions, uh, just for your consideration. Okay, any other questions from the coaches attending the session here? Okay, um, going once, twice. So I think there was a question on Facebook to ask if any school coaches has done e-coaching. So I think um, it's really uh, dependent on the schools. So like I mentioned earlier, do take the opportunity now to engage with um, your CCA teachers in charge to find out what the plans that the schools have for you so that um, you can apply, start applying what you are learning um, towards preparing good e-coaching sessions for your athletes. Okay? Um, yeah, so if that is all, uh, okay. Mm. Thank you for your time and your attention. This is the feedback link. So um, do use your phone and scan the QR code, okay, on your feedback. Fill in yeah, the form. Yeah, and can I just jump in uh, for a while? Yeah, sure. Um, I think Sham uh, is also suggesting there's actually this uh, application called uh, Coach I. Uh, you want to share more about this, uh, Sham? Yeah. Thanks, uh, Shane. So, guys, uh, we can actually go and down, uh, go to Coach I, um, Coach I dot com, and then they have an application where I think we need to play around with it. And actually, from videos, we will be able to do a bit of biomechanical analysis, right? Uh, and visually draw and send to our athletes the angles and the postures that are appropriate for our game that the game that we are coaching right so that they can have a very clear visual idea of what mistakes they are making right so of course all this is uh, requires us to explore in, and take our time to play around with the app so uh, uh, we might want to try and test it out first and maybe get our family members to to be our experiments right in terms of biomechanical analysis before we try it uh, during an actual coaching session, but I hope you guys have some fun uh, exploring what this uh, app and what this site can do. Okay, thanks, Sham. So.